Well, hey, good morning, everyone. It's a happy Monday here in the Bay's home. Uh, we're, man, what a great game last night, Pastor Jess. I'm so sorry. Your Chiefs just couldn't make it out, man. They didn't even really show up to play. Uh, but, man, it is a great day to be a Tampa fan. So this is the first time I've done one of these, so just bear with me. Uh, if you don't know me, if you're joining us in one of our engaged groups, uh, my name is Pastor Allen. I'm one of the, I'm the assistant pastor and worship arts pastor at Broadcast. And I had the privilege to preach yesterday on the topic of rhythm of rest. And before we dive in this morning, uh, I just want to ask your group a question, maybe to get the conversation started. But what is something that you enjoy doing that gives you a sense of purpose, uh, maybe that energizing thing that you like to do that puts your mind at ease, puts it at peace, maybe even gives you rest? Uh, so why don't we talk about that as a group? And leaders, you can hit pause here. So as we discussed yesterday, we have been in a series called Rhythm all year long, and it's been based in the passage of Matthew chapter 11. And we've been in both uh, the message translation, and then yesterday I flipped the script a little bit and put it in the NIV passage. Since we've been reading out of the message, I want to read from the NIV passage, and you can read with me. And I encourage you as a group to read this aloud together. This is the NIV, and it says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the first thing that I talked about yesterday is that the number, the first thing that we see in this passage is that we have to come to Jesus. And I discussed this is one of the hardest things that we do as a Christian. Uh, to come to Jesus, it kind of contradicts all of our feelings. It, it contradicts our, our wants, our desires, our selfish ambitions. Uh, it's a humbling experience when we come to Jesus. And I ask the question, are you tired of being tired? And, you know, for my own life, I've seen that. And not necessarily in the physical sense, but in the mental sense. And I'm sure everyone in their lives has a time and place where they've been either physically exhausted or mentally exhausted. You're feeling like you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. And so Jesus is saying, come to me and I will take this burden off. So Jesus, when he says to come, it doesn't mean just to maybe come to him physically because we can't always do that right now and in, in, here on earth. But when Jesus says to come to him, it means to have belief and it means to have your whole heart. And yesterday, and this, uh, I, I said this uh, this quote, that when I believe in something, uh, when something is possible, when I believe something's possible, my posture towards that thing, that ideal, that person, that belief, it changes. And when we believe with our whole heart that Jesus is the Son of God, the Alpha Omega, the Son of Man, the Son of David, etc., when we have that, our posture should change for what Jesus can do in our lives. So Jesus says, for when we come in, in, from, to him, that next we need to take from him, which is my second point, take. And it says, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And Jesus says that you know, a yoke is a wooden fasten that goes over oxen or you know, other farm animals so that the farmers in the field can get the oxens together, more than one, pair them up, and have more power when going into the farms and plowing. And then they have the control that they need to be able to tell the oxen where to go. And Jesus says this because he, being 
omnipotent and all knowing that when we try to carry things on our own, when we have our own yokes on our back, that they're that they're not going to feel like the way that his is. And our yokes are heavy. They are full of just strife and difficulty. And we find that when Jesus, when he puts a yoke on our back, that it's light and it brings rest. And a yoke is supposed to bring bondage, hardship, and pain. But Jesus contradicts this and says, no, 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 it's light, it's free, and, it's, and it brings rest. And not only does it bring rest, it brings a consciousness of sin. So then we are aware of the burdens in our lives. Because when Jesus takes something off of us, then we're aware that it was there. That, it, that we were doing something that we were not supposed to. So he takes away the physical guilt, the distress, and the burdens. There's that consciousness of sin. And then number two, there's a rest that's in our hearts when Jesus' yoke is on our backs. And there becomes to be this feeling of no more anxiousness, no more fear, no more distress in our hearts. And there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. And then Jesus says, once we take, once we come to him, that we need to learn. And Jesus says, and, and again, in the Matthew passage, come to me all who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and humble in heart. And as I discussed yesterday, the Greek word manathano refers to teaching, learning, instructing, and discipling. So Jesus is saying that we have to genuinely understand and accept the teaching that he is giving to the people. That we have to take it, not only just hear it, but we have to apply it to one's life. And this is a lifelong commitment. And Jesus also, after he says to learn, he says that for I am gentle and humble in heart. And I gave the example yesterday. I don't come to you here on this video chat this morning and say, hi, I'm Pastor Allen. Uh, please learn from me for I am wise and I am gentle and I am humble in heart. No, 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 that would be weird. But see, Jesus in his modern, in his, in his uh, context back then in the culture doesn't make sense to us modernly. But back then, we, we found out, as I was teaching yesterday, that the culture was contradicting to being gentle and humble. That the Pharisees and the, the Jews, they had a sense of arrogance about their pride and their education of Yahweh and God. They're, they had this disposition that was an elitism culture. So Jesus is undermining these people and saying, no, 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 the way of I is going to be different. I'm going to be gentle and I'm going to be humble about who I am and who I say that I am. And then lastly, we discuss that once we come to Jesus, once we take his yoke, and once we learn from him, there begins to be a rhythm of rest. And it says this in the passage, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and then you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And, and we found out yesterday that rest in the Greek means to be refreshed or revived from a long journey or labor. So Jesus is challenging us. If you come to me, if you take from me, if you learn from me, then I will refresh you on this lifelong journey. So as we transition into our discussion questions, I want just to throw it out to you guys. How can you do these steps better so that you're not burdened, so that you're not weary, and so that you can experience a rhythm of rest in the Father? We're so glad that you guys have been tuning with us through this series called Rhythm. Next week, this week actually, sorry, we're going to be kicking off a brand new series, a relationship and marriage series titled The Vow, and it's going to be an amazing time, and how timely to kick it off on Valentine's Day. So God bless, we'll see you on Sunday, and hey, go Bucks.